Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Welcome if you are new today. Oh, baby, you're just like moving like crazy. Um, today, I am finally gonna be able to film for you guys what's in my hospital bag. I didn't even know if I was gonna make it this far to be able to share with you guys what I'm taking to the hospital. But I am so glad that here we are. I'm hoping I actually get to upload this, but I am almost 37 weeks. So that's about as much of a bump shot as I can show you because I am sitting on the floor and I am not moving my butt. But anyway, this is what I'm taking with me to the hospital for baby number three. We're not sure if baby is a boy or a girl, so keep that in mind. I'm gonna share um, what I'm taking for myself plus what I'm packing for the baby. So let's just get straight into it. I'm gonna have as much of this stuff linked down for you guys as I can find. I'm hoping this video will be helpful. Like I've done this before and every labor I've learned something new. Every labor though is very different. So just keep that in mind when you watch these videos. I know you watch these videos as like a guide. Like I myself found myself watching like a bunch of these videos and even my old videos, which I had done for my other labors. But just go in with that mindset of like, I might end up using some stuff that I didn't think I'd use. Or I may end up packing some stuff that don't doesn't work for the kind of labor I'm having. I've had two natural like vaginal births um, with my other two kids. I'm praying that this time again, we have a vaginal delivery, but there are some things that like, if I were to need a C-section for some reason or have an emergency C-section, there are probably things more particular to a C-section that I obviously do not have packed in my bag because I'm not preparing for that. So I hope you guys are doing good. Um, let's start off with what is in here. I've had this bag for like ever and it's usually like our weekender bag. I usually pack like all of Jackson's clothes in here for going on a trip, but I am gonna use this as my hospital bag. It's from Luli Bebe. Um, I'll have a link down below for it because I have a code that gets you I think 25% off the bags in case you guys are interested, in case you're looking for like a good weekender bag or a hospital bag like this. I packed this maybe like five or so days ago, but I do also have some new stuff in that I'm gonna kind of like swap out here. But as of right now, this is what is in my hospital bag. So actually first, let me show you, I'm gonna take my um, nursing pillow. This is a My Breast Friend nursing pillow that I've mentioned in the like what I've bought for the baby video or newborn, what's on my registry videos, which I'll have linked down below in case you guys haven't watched those. But since I do plan on nursing, I have always enjoyed having my nursing pillow at the hospital that way I'm like going about nursing in the most comfortable way you get lots of support baby is still teeny tiny sometimes it's hard to nurse without some kind of pillow so since I already have it I am going to be taking this one with me and then I have almost everything else in here um, that is like for me but like I said I'll probably have to swap out a few things so in here is where I'm planning on putting like just some of my toiletries like basic stuff like I'm taking a brush I'm taking a claw clip because I'm gonna probably want my hair out of my face, some like hair ties, like just the general stuff like that. I still haven't packed my full on toiletries. So when it is time to go to the hospital, I'll have to like grab my toiletry bag that has like my toothbrush and my deodorant and nothing crazy. Maybe like shampoo and conditioner if I can find like a little travel size bag, makeup remover cloths or like a face wash, just like the very basic stuff that you need so that you can like feel nice and fresh and taken care of. My makeup I'll take, but nothing like out of the ordinary. Then in this pocket over here, I am taking my perineal spray that I have shared with you guys like a million times. The hospital is gonna give you some kind of like dermaplast or something if you do have a vaginal delivery. It's like a spray that you spray down there and your nether parts and it like numbs that area after you've given birth. I have always just been a big fan of the Earth Mama brand. I have always felt like it just does better for me down there and it's a little bit more natural in my opinion. So I'm gonna take this and then I'm also taking, I think I just have like a chapstick in here, right? I think I had like an extra chapstick that I was like, if I leave all my other toiletries at home, at least I'll have chapstick because that is obviously an essential. So this is like very not organized. I need to organize this a little bit better. This is for the baby. So I'll show you guys that in a minute. If there's one piece of advice that I can give you of things to take to the hospital with you guys, it's gonna be snacks. A lot of this stuff that you'll see, like the hospital gives you, but one thing that I have found in my labors is that like after I give birth, I'm freaking hungry. Okay, like I want food and you don't really know what time of day you're gonna end up like in labor or What time you're gonna give birth what time the child comes out of you So I think with Jackson it was that he was born like later on at night And I believe that the cafeteria in the hospital was closed and it was just like yes I could tell Joe to like go run to the store and get me snacks, but like I kind of wanted him there So point is this time around I am packing <laughs> my own snacks so that way I have stuff immediately. Like as soon as they give me the green light that I can eat, I can eat. So in here, just to give you an idea, I have a little bit of popcorn that I enjoy eating. These are like unreal. They're like a 
peanut M&M, but like a little healthier, cleaner version. I have a bunch of like granola bars, you know, things like that, that will at least get me by through the night if I am really hungry. These are some other like protein bars that I really like. I'm also taking some liquid IV because as long as the doctor says that I can drink that, since I'm gonna be nursing, I like to make sure that I'm drinking lots of water and I've always liked to take that. So whatever snacks you might like to eat, maybe take that. I'm also gonna bring to the hospital these booby bars. I've never actually had this brand, but I am a fan of like lactation cookies. I forget the brand of the cookies. The Milk Makers, is that the brand that does the cookies? I will try to put a picture. Those are fantastic and they just taste really good. Whether or not they help with your milk production or not, they taste really good. But I'm hoping that these will be both, that they will taste good and they will help with milk production. So I'm gonna take a box of these. Then I have like the practical things, like I have a really long phone charger. You'll see that in like almost all of these videos. You don't really know where the outlets are gonna be in the hospital room, but chances are you're gonna wanna like maybe have your phone nearby or you're taking pictures or you're trying to distract yourself while you're pushing, while you're in labor pain. So the longer the phone cord you can get, the better in my opinion. So I'm gonna tell you guys my philosophy in terms of like labor itself. I don't think that there's a lot that you really need for yourself for when you're laboring. Everyone's gonna have their own opinion on that, but I don't think that there's a lot that you need. With my first, with Riley, I remember that I went out and I bought like the beautiful little hospital gown and I wanted to have like my own birthing gown. Like that was cute, it looked cute for like the one picture that I took in it, but it ended up getting destroyed and messy and bloody and full of all fluids and disgusting stuff that comes out of you. So then with my second labor, I decided, you know what, I'm not gonna spend the money on a birthing gown. I mean, if you wanted to have one or if you already got one, that's fine, but like it's not like a necessary thing. It's like a luxury and maybe a luxury, maybe not because you end up like ruining it half the time and then you spend money on something that then goes in the trash. So I don't think that's necessary. I don't think that you really need anything fancy. Depending on the labor itself and like how it goes, like you may not even have time to like, you know, get everything perfectly ready like you have in your mind and your perfect birthing plan. Just know that going into it. Like with Riley, Riley was a very special labor it was not the greatest of experiences and by the way i have both of my kids labor and delivery vlogs here on youtube so if you want i'll try to see if i can link them down below for you to watch them if you're new here if you've never seen them before with riley i was 41 weeks when i delivered her and it was one of those scenarios where i wasn't sure if my water had broken so i went into the hospital and like for them to check if it was actually my water or if it, i had just like peed my pants and they're like, no, like your water has been broken. And then after that, I was like immediately admitted into the hospital. So it wasn't like a super planned, super like well-coordinated like arrival to the hospital. With Jackson, it was a totally different experience because Jackson was 39 weeks and it was like a scheduled induction. So that was like freaking going on vacation. It was like, I walked in and they were like, oh look, your gown and your socks are here waiting for you. Make yourself comfortable, we'll be right with you. And then we'll start the process. Like two totally different experiences. So just keep that in mind is all I'm trying to say. I'm sure you've heard that before. But most of what you're gonna need is for after. Like after the child comes out of you, what is it that is gonna make you most comfortable? So for me, I am taking some nursing bras because again, I wanna be comfy and I wanna make sure that nursing is, you know, comfortable, easy access. I bought this new one from Amazon. It's the Mom Cozy brand. And again, if I didn't say it already, like everything that I can find for you guys, I'll link along with my sizing and everything in the description box. But these are fantastic. Like I think I paid, I don't know if I paid like 30 bucks for them. They weren't like the cheapest, but they also weren't a fortune but this is like a really nice nursing bra. I've had other nursing bras and I haven't really loved them. This one is super nice. It does have like these cups inside that you can take off or leave in there. They're not like sewed in, which I wish they were like more sewed in, but this is a super nice bra, very comfy, very cozy. And then it has the clip. So you can just go ahead and feed your baby. And then that way you're still like, you know, there's still coverage there. I have this one from last time. I've had this one for several years now. I don't even really know what brand it is. I would have to see if I can find, maybe it's from Target, but these are like the two nursing bras that as of right now I have. So at least I'll be going to the hospital with those. I am going to bring just a couple pairs of socks. And then I do have just a couple pairs of granny panties, just in case I end up like wanting to put these on. But I will tell you that I have always been a big fan of either like the mesh panties that they give you at the hospital or what I think I liked even better last time were like the disposable like adult diapers. Um, so I did buy a pack of these. I've never used this particular brand before. I think last time I used like the Always brand, 
but this says organic cotton cover period underwear and that's literally what it is it's like a giant diaper that you wear and in my opinion based off of my other labors just find that it's easier just like put something there you're not worrying about like these giant pads because in the hospital if this is like your first time doing this you get afterwards like they'll give you these mesh panties that you can put on but then you've got to put like this literal like wee wee pad like if you have a dog like a wee wee pad like you literally put that in your underwear and then you're like walking around and there's like all of this material down there and i don't know then you're like feeling like it's out of place it's just not fun it kind of feels like just awkward and weird not that like wearing a diaper isn't <laughs> awkward and weird but i just feel like everything's like all in one place and then when you're done bleeding in that and you just switch out you just change out the whole thing and it's just easier the other thing that i got just in case along the same lines is i did buy a box of like the freedom mom i think I don't know exactly what they're called, but I'll put a picture here. I think that those are more similar to the mesh panties, but I've heard that some people have really liked them. So I'll keep you posted if I end up going one way or the other, like with them. And after I give birth, I plan on like updating you guys on like what I actually used and what was helpful, all of that. Um, but I'll have a couple options because to me, like postpartum and like after I give birth, that's really what I want. I want to feel the most like myself that I can. I want to feel not dirty. I want to feel clean. I want to be able to take a shower. So for the shower, I actually bought a pair of um, like little sandal things that I can take into the shower. They haven't gotten here just yet. I think they get here tomorrow, but I bought like a pair of like new little sandals so I can hop in the shower. Obviously like those are not necessary. You can take a shower without special like bath sandals, but I'm in Miami and whatever. I'll use those <laughs> again and again, but things like that that are going to just like make you feel nice because you've just been through something very traumatic you've been through something that has taken a toll on you and yes god willing everything goes well and god willing you have your baby that you get to hold in your arms but it takes a toll on you so you want to feel like nice and do something nice for yourself in terms of how you feel afterwards so i've got like the basics the bras the underwear i'm gonna take two nightgowns that i just bought from amazon and i'll include some footage of me here wearing them so that you can see what they look like um i got this one that is really really soft and cozy it's just like a dress and this time around, I think that postpartum, I'm going to be more of like a dress girl versus like a pants girl. I think I just want things to be nice and flowy down there without a bunch of tightness on my belly because my belly is enormous. I remember that when you give birth or like if this is again your first time, please be aware of the fact that after you give birth, you are still going to look very pregnant. You are still going to be very, very large. And given that I am quite large... <laughs> Still gonna be very very large afterwards so i don't want like a lot of bands and tight fitting clothes i want things that are loose and stretchy and that is the vibe postpartum this one's super cozy and then it has buttons that will open up like all the way down so it'll be nursing friendly and it just feels very nice it feels like a treat to wear this so i'm gonna pack this one with me and then i also bought this set that i am really happy with they have it in a bunch of different colors but it's a dress, it's like a short sleeve dress, and then it comes with the matching robe. But the robe is very lightweight. I don't know if you guys can see that. Like it's very stretchy, very comfy, but very lightweight because I have another robe that I have at home, but it's kind of like, it's like more of a cozy material. And again, I'm in Miami, it is the summertime, it is very hot. So I wanted something just lightweight that I could throw on over other PJs, but it's a set so I can wear them together and it looks really cute and then the dress itself is very nursing friendly. It just like opens up in the front um, so I can nurse in this. And I really like this. So I've got two um, like PJs loungewear that I can wear when I'm in the hospital. And then I will just take one pajama set that's like pants in case I decide for some reason, like, I don't know, I'm not feeling the dresses or I don't know, I want to be a little bit more covered up or I'm bleeding a lot and I just want to feel more secure down there. I have one PJ set that I really like. These are um, from Amazon too, but it's just like a plain black pants pajama set, very comfy too. And then it's got the buttons going all the way down. So nursing friendly. So that is going with me. And then I do have a cardigan in case it's cold, in case I just wanna be just warmer or whatever. I have just a cardigan that I'll take with me. I do also have like an outfit to come home in. So this is another little set that I bought on Amazon. It's a really long, top and then it comes with the matching shorts so even though the shorts like i'll be wearing the adult diaper and maybe i don't know like maybe that'll be like too tight on my butt and you're gonna see me wearing a diaper but like whatever i'm just going home so it doesn't matter the shirt is long enough that it'll cover my butt the chances are it'll be fine but just something to come home 
in. And then I am going to take this, which I packed the last time. And thankfully, by the grace of God, I didn't need it. But you guys, it's an inflatable donut for your butthole. <laughs> it's an inflatable donut in case you have really bad, um, like, butt labor, birthing pain. Um, in case it's really hard for you to sit um, with Riley. Riley destroyed my butt. Like, I don't know what the heck she did when I labored with Riley, but after I gave birth to her, I think it was more painful just to like sit and, and just be sitting because my whole butthole area hurt a ton. So I remember like my mom running and like grabbing this for me and I have kept it ever since because I'm paranoid that I'm gonna give birth again and have that same pain and not be able to sit. So there we go, I have my <laughs> butt donut that I will take with me. I did see though like a TikTok from somebody or like a reel from somebody recently that showed kind of like the same concept. Like if you end up with really bad like butt pain, something that you can do is like if you have a boppy pillow, like. I don't know that this one would be the greatest because it's not like the right shape but if you have a boppy pillow sometimes you can use your boppy pillow as kind of like that butt donut but then i don't know if you're gonna want your butt like also your kid like sitting on it but that's like the general idea like something nice for you to be able to sit on because sometimes like that area like it really gets destroyed but that's really what i'm taking for myself the only other thing i kind of have like accessible or available is i do have my um my nursing pump my breast pump i went ahead and just like separated that i already have a bunch of the bottles and like the pump parts sterilized and ready to go and the only reason i'm even considering taking those to the hospital is because when i give birth to riley riley ended up in the nicu which is like a whole other story she was 41 weeks I had not at all anticipated that she would need the NICU and then she wound up in the NICU for three days, worst three days of my life. But when I was kicked out of the hospital, also dramatic, like I was kicked out of the hospital, I had nowhere for me to stay. I had to go to a hotel room and then Joe and I would like travel back and forth from like the hotel to the NICU to see the baby. It was a total mess, but one of the things that I was doing when I was at the hospital was I was pumping to make sure that I was maintaining my milk supply and making sure that my milk was coming in. So in the event that God forbid, I am separated from my child and I'm unable to nurse right away, I wanna at least have my pump somewhere where I can tell my mom like, hey, can you go by the house? Can you bring me my pump? Or maybe I leave it in the car or maybe I bring it with me altogether. But I do want to be able to have that somewhere ready to go. Because if you're not in the hospital, I think in the hospitals, they, there may be like pumps that you can use. Because I remember like actually using a pump at the hospital. But if you want to have your own and God forbid, again, you get separated from your baby. You want to maintain your milk supply. I just, I'm kind of like attached to my pump because of that reason. And then I'm actually gonna be taking my tripod and my camera, the one that I'm filming on right now because I do plan on somewhat filming the labor and doing some kind of labor and delivery vlog. So um, I will do my best this time around to do that as well, whether it's like a birth story after the fact, maybe they're in the hospital, I don't know. But I have recorded all of the other kids' births and I really wanna record this child's birth because it's just like a special time. Um, so whether or not you're a vlogger, whether or not you plan on sharing your birth vlog with the entire world or even recording it at all, that is fine. Capture whatever kind of memories you want to you know, capture for your child. If you're a pictures person, take pictures. Um, like those things just, I don't know, they mean a lot to me obviously because this is my life. My life is recording stuff. I love looking back on those, but if you are gonna take stuff, then you wanna make sure you bring your camera and batteries and memory cards cards and your phone and your charger so that way you don't get there and then you don't have this stuff again is there a chance that i could be like out on the street and then suddenly my water breaks and i have to rush to the hospital and i have none of this like there is a chance that that could happen and you know what at the end of the day the most important part of this would be that the baby is born and the baby's healthy and everything is fine all of this is a luxury all of this is not super necessary all of this somebody could run back to the house and grab or in the hospital like they would you would be able to like give birth without any of this but anyway i am going to switch you guys to the tripod really fast because i'm going to show you what i'm packing for the baby and i have like stuff in other parts of the room so let's do that okay so for the baby this is what i plan on taking obviously i have to fold it better and like get this like put wherever it is that i'm going to take it i'm going to see if it'll fit in that big bag if not my plan is to use one of my other like diaper bags these are my diaper bags the same brand as the big bag that i showed you this is the petite and this is the big size. So usually this is like what I use for my diaper 
diaper bag when I have a teeny tiny baby. Then eventually I move on to the smaller one when I don't have to take so much stuff. But regardless, if I can't get everything to fit in my bag, then I'll take one of those and then that one will be like specifically for the baby. Here's really what I'm gonna be taking. So I have a couple of the Velcro swaddles and this is gonna be hard for me to do with one hand. Okay, it's probably gonna be super bright because I can have you guys like right by a window. But I'm just gonna take two of these little Velcro swaddles. Of course, they're not gonna do what I want them to do right now. But I've had these with both of the kids. I think they're the brand, the Swaddle Me brand, but I have one that's the preemie size and then I have another one that is the small size. So I'm not sure how um, big this baby's gonna be. I have an ultrasound next week and that'll kind of give me a better idea of like what size stuff I need for the baby. Because if you've been following along the pregnancy, I've been told a couple times that baby's measuring big, so I'm like, I don't know what big means. Will I need newborn stuff or zero to three months or preemie stuff? Like with Jackson, I think I ended up needing like some preemie stuff, but point is I've got a couple of swaddles and then I'm taking one muslin blanket. This is just like a blanket, a white, like simple blanket that I can wrap the baby in. They're gonna give you like a bunch of blankets. So it's not like a necessary thing. This is more like if I wanna take pictures or wrap up the baby in something from home, I will have that. And then I have like a pair of little socks in case I want to put some socks on the baby. And then this is just like, again, some stuff that I've separated. Maybe I'll pare it down once I have a better idea of like what size the baby's gonna be. But I have just those like footed, you know, zip up sleepers. I have this one and this stuff is gender neutral because I think I mentioned like we don't know the gender of the baby. It's gonna be a surprise. So I needed just a bunch of gender neutral stuff. This is stuff that I've had from the other kids. This is like a little sleeping gown. Something that I really love for the hospital are the shirts that are like snap shirts, the ones that don't have to go completely over their heads. So I have this little outfit that can be like a coming home outfit that is like one of those little snap shirts. And then this is another outfit that I did buy for the baby that's just like a pair of pants with the long sleeve shirt. And then these are like the little snap shirts. I'm sure you've seen what they look like. So this one is in white and it's just easy because you don't have to put anything over their head. And then I have like a little onesie. And then this I believe is another possible coming home outfit. It's just a little white top with the white pants. So something like that is what I'll be taking in terms of clothes for the baby. This is one burp cloth. It's really like a cloth diaper, but this is what I use for burp cloth. So this is washed and ready to go. I am gonna be taking probably like one um, boy outfit and then one girl outfit. This was Jackson's, this was Riley's. So whichever the baby is, then I can put the baby in this and we can take like a really cute picture and it'll be sweet because this is something that their sibling war. And then along those same lines, I grabbed the bag of like old baby bows just in case, baby's a girl. I think there's like one little white bow that I might grab from here and bring to the hospital in case I'm gonna need that. I'm also gonna bring some diaper balm. And then this is a pacifier holder that I will put maybe just one of each of these pacifiers. I showed you guys these in my nesting video. These are Itsy Ritzy and these are Ma'am, I believe. So I'll just wash them and get them ready and then take one of each so that I have some passies for the hospital. And then I will also be taking the sound machine that I shared with you guys. So far I really like this sound machine, but I figured it'd be good to have, if I wanna use it in the hospital, like in the actual room, or if I wanna take it like on the way home, in the car, it plays white noise. If the baby's getting, you know, fussy or whatever, we can use it. So I'm gonna have that ready to go. So yeah, that is it you guys. That is what I have packed so far for the baby, for myself. Um, I think I feel much better now <laughs> that at least some of this stuff is packed and ready to go because a couple weeks ago I thought that I was going into labor early and I was like, I have literally nothing planned. I have nothing prepped. So my recommendation is like, you know, if you're like in the 35 week mark, maybe start making some, just like separating some things. If you want to like have some of this stuff ready to go, it's giving me a lot of peace of mind just knowing that this stuff is here and that, um, you know, we can just like pick up and go. I would love to know if there are things that you guys are taking that I didn't mention or things that you had a really good experience with or something that you took and you're like, this was the biggest waste of space, biggest waste of money. Um, let me know what your experiences have been like. I know I didn't mention like a Perry bottle. Um, that's because I don't even think I'm gonna purchase a new Perry bottle. The hospital will give you a Perry bottle and I remember that with Riley, I believe I got like a fancy one or maybe I didn't. And then with Jackson, I think maybe also I 
I bought a separate one, but I know for a fact that I didn't end up using like the Freedom Mom one because I just used whatever the hospital gave me. Like by Jackson's labor, I was like, let me just use whatever the hospital gives me. Um, I don't need anything fancy. I just want, I just need to like wash myself down there. So I'm not planning on if like, if I can't find my old one anywhere, which I haven't found it yet, then I'll probably just use the one that the hospital is giving me. And then I think also like sometimes I have liked or I have brought with me in the past like a fan, like a little handheld fan. If I can remember to bring it, I will. But I think I brought it with Jackson and I didn't end up using it. Since his labor was so easy and my contractions with Jackson were really not at all like what they were with Riley. Um, I never ended up like pulling it out and using it. I wanted the fan so that I could like use it to blow air in my face for contractions to help me like breathe through contractions, but I never ended up using it. So I'm sure that I'll be fine. Like if I don't take that with me this time, the one thing that I have downstairs that maybe I'll throw in my bag too is the Hakka. I do have the Hakka for nursing. So I might want to take that, um, so that it like catches let down and you know, but even though I'm not even sure because like in the hospital, you're probably not even like having full on letdown. You probably just have like a bit of colostrum. I don't know, maybe I'm wrong, but you're not really like fully established in nursing yet. Sometimes it takes a couple days for your milk to come in, but I don't know. We drive ourselves crazy, like just making sure that we have all the things and then you get to the hospital and like all you want is your baby to come out. You just want your baby there and you just want to spend time with your baby have skin to skin with your baby so yeah i would love to know what your experiences have been like and again if you're almost there like i'm praying for you i'm praying that you guys all have great deliveries and that they are beautiful experiences i know firsthand what it's like to have like a really bad experience and then also like a really good experience and i pray to the lord that everyone gets to have a good labor experience because like it just makes all the difference so i'm praying for you guys i'm thinking about you guys we'll continue to make videos <laughs> until this baby comes so definitely stick around if you're new we'll be doing this motherhood craziness newborn life thing together i love being able to look back at like my newborn vlogs of like when jackson was a newborn and riley was a newborn so i plan on doing the same thing this time around and sharing the struggles the craziness and the chaos like i do every other day of my life so i love you guys thank you for being here make sure to give this video a big thumbs up if you enjoyed it subscribe if you're new and i will see you guys in the next one bye guys